And now, Houston's most award-winning newscast, Fox News at 9, with Brand Fawcett, Dave Barker, Robert Smith with weather, and Mark Berman on sports. Good evening, everyone. A new era in world history began tonight. Germany is reunified, and it's a heck of a party. It sure is. Three hours ago, the historic moment finally arrived when East Germany was absorbed with all its problems into a new united Germany. With flags waving, fireworks, the singing of the new national anthem, and the ringing of bells, including a replica of the Liberty Bell from Philadelphia, Germany was united for the first time in 45 years. The rush toward unity, which began barely a year ago, is complete tonight. And this monumental world event is being celebrated in Houston this evening. Our Sue Speck is now standing by live at the Black Forest Restaurant. Got to be quite a party, huh, Sue? Oh, it is, Dave. We've been listening to German music. There's plenty of German food here and plenty of German beer. It's all part of a celebration that began the very moment the two Germanys united half a world away. A toast of German Jägermeister, and Houston is swept up in the spirit of Germany's reunification. It's my heritage. It's my, this is my country, Germany. My descendants came from Germany, and we're all Americans, but we're German-Americans. And I'm really happy that Germany is reunifying. It symbolizes to me the peace of Germany and ultimately the peace of the world. Someone brought a chunk of the Berlin Wall. One patron lived a mile from that symbol of division as a child in West Germany. After seeing life on the other side, she never thought she'd live to see this day. You saw the depressing things. It looked like, you know, it was nothing but a big prison. You didn't see no colors, no nothing. You didn't see no smiles, no laughter, no joy. The unification, you see so many tears, so many smiles, so many laughter, people coming together. There are going to be some pain, but in the meantime, it's going to be beautiful. And as you so eloquently put it, this is not a time to analyze the difficulties that Germany will undoubtedly face. These people are here to celebrate a moment, a historic moment, and David, it's nearly impossible not to be caught up in the excitement of this event. And a loud moment at that. All right, Suspect, thank you very much. In local news, young criminals may soon find themselves shipped off to boot camp. Harris County officials today took a leaf out of the state's handbook in efforts to offset overcrowded prison conditions. The use of military-style camps received the okay today from county commissioners. 300 first-time nonviolent offenders between the ages of 17 and 25 will be shipped off. Basically, we think that this type of individual can be impacted by a very regimented program, a lot of good old military discipline and how to follow orders, as long as it gets literal doses of also programming involving uh, life skills, how to deal with confrontations, uh, why do people see you as you are, and this sort of thing, as well as educational programs. The boot camp will be located near the adult detention facility near Atascacita. It will cost about $3 million to build funding to come from the state. It should be ready to house inmates beginning in February. And in another move to control crime and to promote unification in our community, the Houston Police Civilian Review Committee is ready to take complaints from citizens about police officers. The panel, which will recommend disciplinary action against officers found guilty of misconduct, held its first public meeting tonight. And that's where reporter Olga Campos is standing by live. Olga? Well, friend, as you probably recall, the idea of involving citizens in a complaint-taking process grew out of outrage following numerous incidents, including two fatal shootings by Houston police officers. Last year, the number of civilian shootings rose to an all-time high of 40. That's double the number in 1988. Twelve of those shootings were fatal, and two of those killings stand clear in the minds of most Houstonians. October 31st, 5 a.m. Idly Delaney lies dead on the Southwest Freeway. She was driving to work when she was cut off, then chased by a car carrying three off-duty, out-of-uniform Houston police officers who had been drinking. Alex Gonzalez would later be convicted of gunning her down when the cars came to a stop. Delaney's death caused an uproar that included protests, charges of racism, and a cry for a civilian review board. Just two weeks later, the clamor intensified when off-duty security guard Byron Gillum was shot to death by another Houston police officer. It was the third time in seven years Scott Shearhart had killed a black man while on duty. Although no bill by two grand juries, an arbitrator has yet to decide if Shearhart should be allowed back on the police force. Now made up of 21 citizens, the panel only recommends disciplinary action. 
final say-so goes to the police chief. But during the committee's public hearing, it became clear many citizens aren't aware of the complaint process. How does a person access your committee? There's no phone number on here. Who do you call? Is there, what is the process? Is there, is there a form letter the person has to, to put forward? What does a person do when a person comes to your body? Does they have to, do they have to have documentation? One woman told of the police brutality she allegedly experienced five years ago after taking her complaints to the Internal Affairs Division. That's why I am here tonight because it's not a day, there's not a week that goes by that I don't relive the whole situation. It is never going to go away from me as long as he remains on the police department. Panel members are all selected by the mayor. They agreed to review the police process and also they stress their commitment of access to the public. Now, people attending tonight's meeting, and let me make it clear there was only a handful, say they'll be closely monitoring the committee to make sure they keep that commitment to the public. Live at City Hall, I'm Olga Campos. Back to you, friend. Okay, Olga, thanks. Perhaps we can get some answers to some of those questions. Dave? Well, Clarence Bradley is free tonight. The mystery of who killed Cheryl Ferguson remains. As Lloyd Guyton now reports, a local organization pushing for Bradley's release still has much work to do. Go to the federal court. Go to Members of the Free Clarence Bradley Coalition want the killers of Cheryl Ferguson brought to justice. Today they called on prosecutor Peter Spears to indict two janitors they say killed Ferguson. Justice has not been served because the murders of Cheryl D. Ferguson are still free. Furthermore, the law enforcement officials who framed Clarence Bradley for a murder they knew he did not commit are still in office. The U.S. Supreme Court on Monday refused to reinstate the murder conviction of Branley, a former high school janitor who was found guilty of raping and strangling Ferguson to death. An all-white jury convicted him almost a decade ago. The case will not be retried. But despite that, coalition members want to see Gary Ackerman and James Robinson charged with murder. Testimony revealed they may have been the culprits. There's the sworn testimony of Brenda Medina, Robinson's former common-law wife, in which she stated that on the day of the murder, Robinson came home with bloody shoes on and told her that he had murdered a girl at Conroe High School. The coalition also wants two judges associated with the murder case removed from office, saying they were racially biased. And the group wants to meet with Montgomery County Prosecutor Peter Spears about the possible indictments. But Spears said today he has no plans to meet with the coalition, and he has no plans to go after Ackerman or Robinson, saying neither of them had anything to do with the murder. He contends Branley is the real killer. Spears says if the coalition wants to further their investigation, they can take it up with a grand jury themselves. Boney's group says they may just do that. In South Houston, Lloyd Geit, Fox 26 News. Houston ranks second in the state for the number of juveniles charged with murder. Police reported 20 such arrests in 1989, but Dallas has the dubious honor of being first, with 32 youngsters under the age of 17 being charged with murder. This year, that number has already doubled in Dallas. Dallas officials say an increase in gang activity is partially to blame. Two fire emergencies sent smoke billowing and firefighters scrambling near the North, uh, North Loop during rush hour tonight. The first occurred at the Union Pacific Rail Yard. Two workers were welding and ignited the insulation between the car's outer layers. The tanker, by the way, was full of formaldehyde. That's a very toxic and flammable chemical. There were no evacuations or injuries. Had the tanker been empty, the emergency an would have been car, worse. We would have had a situation where we had a pressure buildup inside the shell, and we would have had a pop-off and therefore a vapor leak uh, with the emergency relief valve doing its job. And maybe evacuations. That's happen. right. That's right. And at the very same time, only a few hundred yards away, a huge black column of smoke rose over an industrial area on Kirkpatrick Road. Firefighters poured thousands of gallons of water on the fiery pile made from shredded auto parts. Though the smoke blew into nearby business areas, there were no evacuations tonight. Uh, after the flames are gone, they're going to be going in with bulldozers to try and put it totally out. Still to come, a busy day and night in Washington as President Bush tries to sell us on a new federal budget. But first, Wall Street closed down 11 points today, ending a two-day rally. And now, West Texas crew took a, uh, taking a nosedive today, closing at $33.95 for November delivery. That's a one-day decline. It's huge, $3.14. We'll be right back. It's true, with another long-distance telephone service to Geneva, you could get more of some things. Like waiting for calls to go through. So before you make your next international call, call AT&T.
It's true, with another long-distance service to Seoul, you could get more of some things. Like static. So before you make your next international call, call AT&T. I, I love double, double, jetta, jetta. I, I love, love, double, double, checks, checks. Better, better than, than the, the rest, rest. Wheat, wheat, rice, rice, double, double, crunch, crunch. Crackle, crackle, crisp, crisp, bite, bite, munch, munch. It's slightly sweetened. I, I love, love, double, double, checks, checks. Better, better than, than the other rest, rest. Wheat, wheat, rice, rice, double, double, crunch, crunch. Crackle, crackle, crisp, crisp, bite, bite, munch, munch. I, I love, love, double, double, check, checks. Better, better than, than the other rest, rest. Bye, I, bye. I Remember when every song on the radio was your favorite? 94.5 FM KLDE. The music you grew up with is back. The music that made you feel good then. The Beatles! Is making you feel good all over again. KLDE, the only FM station that plays all good time only. 94.5 FM KLDE. On our next A Current Affair, history being made or repeating itself. Watch A Current Affair tomorrow at 6.30 on Fox 26. President Bush took to the airwaves tonight trying to sell the budget proposal. He asked citizens to urge their congressmen and senators to vote for the $500 billion package of tax hikes and spending cuts. The president says the bipartisan plan will lower interest rates and create jobs. The president calls the plan the last best chance to control the deficit. Everyone will bear a small burden. But if we succeed, every American will have a large burden lifted. If we fail to enact this agreement, our economy will falter, markets may tumble, and recession will follow. The plan unveiled on Sunday calls for $134 billion in new taxes on gasoline, alcohol, tobacco, airline tickets, and other luxury items, and includes $105 billion in spending reductions for benefit programs such as Medicare. Well, Congress did give the president a pat on the back today. The Senate approved a resolution praising Bush's actions in the Persian Gulf. Only three senators voted against the resolution. The House approved a similar measure yesterday by a vote of 380 to 29. Meanwhile, the U.S. bolstered its forces in the Persian Gulf as the aircraft carrier USS Independence sailed through the Straits of Hormuz. Well, eight is not enough in the case of the Supreme Court, and there will be a full nine members again by the week's end. David Hackett Souter will become the High Court's 105th Justice. The Senate confirmed his nomination overwhelmingly today. That vote, 90 to 9. Integrity in business, it has been an ongoing theme here in the Texas gubernatorial campaign and at the Johnson Space Center today. Republican Clayton Williams finally agreed to put his business holdings in a blind trust if he's elected governor. As the state's top lawmaker, he would be put in the position of appointing people who would ultimately regulate his oil, banking, and ranching interests. Uh, it's not required by Texas law, but to avoid any semblance of a conflict, we now have determined that we can do that without injury to my business. Meanwhile, at a Central Texas nursing home today, Democrat Ann Richards voted to or vowed to take on the insurance industry, calling on the State Board of Insurance to protect elderly Texans victimized by insurance scams. Hucksters, both on television and in the mail and in person, are coming and selling insurance that do not necessarily meet our needs, that cost exorbitant amounts of money. Richards says it's about time Texas has a governor who cares as much about those who buy insurance as those who sell it. A hijacked Chinese jetliner burst into a ball of flames on a Canton runway yesterday, killing at least 127 people. It made a crash landing into two jets parked on the Chinese tarmac. The crash survivor said there was a struggle in the cockpit. Other reports say two Chinese hijackers trying to force the plane to Hong Kong exploded a bomb in the jet. An Oklahoma City woman is among the crash survivors. Amazing pictures there. Yeah. yeah, and Robert Smith will be along in just a little bit to tell us whether his hunt for a wet October has been successful. But first, Mark Berman says that the Oilers have one less running back in the run and shoot. That story and more when we come right back. This Time to Care message is brought to you by Whataburger. It's getting late, Jenny. Hey, come on, time for school.
The greatest joys come from the simplest things. All it takes is a little time to show you care. This Time to Care message has been brought to you by Whataburger. Hot, fresh, and made to order. Breakfast is special at Whataburger. Hot coffee, fresh orange juice, fluffy pancakes, breakfast on a bun, or an original Whataburger taquito made the way you like them. Sausage and egg or potato and egg. Good things never change at Whataburger. The original Whataburger taquito. My grandpa says the service at his bank is yucky. Flood how long might my dad go bananas? Broken ATM dry my mom at the wall. Well, that's why First Interstate Bank is introducing goof-proof banking. So your folks won't wait more than five minutes in our main lobby teller lines. They'll find ATMs that work and get accurate account statements, or we'll pay them $5. So get your folks to bank at First Interstate, and we'll go the extra mile for them, guaranteed. Goof-proof banking is awesome. So I'm reading the newspaper and it occurs to me I need longer arms. Or maybe I need glasses. Since these are my only eyes, I figure there's only one place to go. Pearl Vision Express. Glasses in one hour. Guess what? Pearl will pay for your exam when you buy a pair of glasses. Or you can buy one pair and they'll give you a second pair. Big news, huh? Hey, gotta go. Time for my Lombardo list. Glasses in one hour at Pearl Vision Express. Call 1-800-YES-EYES for locations. And Mark Berman joins us now. Something had to give. And a bit of a surprise, Dave and Fran, the way it's ended up. The Houston Oilers have waived two-time Pro Bowl running back Mike Rogier. If he's not claimed by another NFL team in the next 24 hours, he becomes a free agent. General Manager Mike Holovac's decision to release Rogier is based on the fact Houston uses only one running back in the run-and-shoot and that Lorenzo White and Alan Pinkett are all the veterans the I club needs. I don't think it's news if you look back to some of my quotes when the, season, when the camp started. Uh, we had four running backs, and I said it was too many. I said even maybe three running backs is too many uh, to keep them all uh, happy. It's hard to keep one happy, let alone three. Rozier's attorney, Art Wilkinson, told Fox 26 earlier today it seemed the Oilers were about to trade Rozier to the Rams for a 12th-round pick, but that deal fell through as all possible trades involving Rozier have in the past few weeks. I would have traded him if there was. And there, was, there, was there wasn't a question of what... What I was asking, what I'd like to get, or that was never that. Rogier is the Oilers' third all-time leading rusher. At least one veteran is not happy Mike has been cut. Yeah, I definitely think it's a mistake, but I, you know, people say I'm biased, but I, I consider myself a student of the game, and I watch a lot of film, and I look at a lot of different personnel, and I mean, he's just a quality football player. I, I really don't understand how his situation was handled from two years ago up until now. And Sean admits a move like this in the middle of the season can hurt the club's morale. People don't understand that a good football team is made out up of character and personality. And, you know, when you lose a guy like Mike, you're definitely losing, you know, a lot of personality. That's like, <laughs> that's like not even stretching it, but a well-loved guy on the team. Tonight, Mike Rogier told me by phone he would have no comment. In high school football, a local team is trying to end the longest losing streak ever among the state's 5A teams. Steve Mark has the story. Not since October 1985 has Jeff Davis High School won a football game. Five years, 48 straight losses, the longest losing streak in the country. They do learn that it's the sport that counts. And you know, they say losing builds character, and I tell my kids all the time, they've got enough character to last till... 2050. Each week, the Panthers try again for that elusive victory. Just can't give up. You got to come out every week and just keep playing, and one day we'll pop this thing. The unwanted tradition here might be a bit undeserved. Davis could be the most undermanned team in the city. With the Magnet School program in the Houston Independent School District, many players who live in the Davis area choose to play elsewhere. Davis has only 28 varsity players. We've got at least five that are going somewhere else that ought to be over here. There should probably be more. But kids that, that go somewhere and maybe not play somewhere, but could start for us. It don't matter how many people are on the field. They only, they only put 11 out there. 11 and 11, that's all. Despite the positive outlook, Davis is unwillingly closing in on the state record of 53 consecutive losses. For a team that in its last game passed for a total of six yards 
and rushed for 14, the record could be within reach. Still, the Panthers dream of a celebration whenever this epic streak finally ends. The school's been talking about fixing up a dinner for the football team, and hopefully someday we'll do it. Until that victory dinner, the Panthers have to pacify themselves with a variation of that age-old phrase. Winning isn't everything, but it sure does help. Steve Mark, Fox 26 Sports. And in baseball, American League East, Toronto has beaten Baltimore 2-1, while Boston is, Boston is losing to Chicago 2-1 in the eighth. The Red Sox open play with a two-game lead over the Blue Jays, and the season ends tomorrow, and the Reds have beaten the Astros 3-2. All right, we'll update that Boston score in City Under Siege. Okay. All right, thanks. Thanks, Mark. You know, Houston has long been known as the Space City. Well, now our futuristic town may be home to the first big urban monorail system in North America. One of the major companies bidding to build Metro's light rail line thinks monorail is the way to go. The plan was unveiled today at the big mass transit convention downtown. Now it's up to Metro to decide whether monorail should be a part of its proposed 22-mile, $1 billion light rail plan. Robert Smith, meteorologist, joining us. Mm -hmm. It's going to be wet, huh? Yeah, I think I'll have more success in uh, finding some wet weather in October than I've had so far in finding some cool weather. Anyway, I think it's heading our way, and I'll tell you when it should arrive when we come back. Welcome to Houston. If you think Chevy's Olds and Geos are cheaper here, you're wrong. Lawrence Marshall Chevy Old Geo in the little town of Hempstead is the number one Chevy truck retailer in America. How do we do it? By selling for less. And now, during our end of model year clearance, Lawrence Marshall's famous discount prices on Chevy's Olds and Geos get even lower. Lawrence Marshall Chevy Olds Geo, 290 to Hempstead. We clobber big city prices. New capital for Texas. You can see it working right now all across the state. New capital for new companies. New capital for growing companies. New capital. Made possible through billions of dollars in new loans to Texas companies of all sizes by one Texas bank. NCNB, Texas. And with over $3 billion more to lend to Texas companies this year, it's only the beginning. If you have an investment in Texas or want to make one, talk to the one Texas bank that shares your point of view. NCNB, Texas. Let's face it, it's depressing to be hospitalized. Ten years ago, if you had a cataract removed, you had no choice. Now it's different. At our eye clinic, we use advanced techniques in cataract care. It takes about 20 minutes to remove a cataract and implant a new lens that can painlessly restore clear vision. And that's something to smile about. Man Eye Clinic, now with offices in Clear Lake and throughout Houston. Well, it was an abnormally dry August as well as an abnormally dry September. Now it finally looks like we're starting to get a few things in the, moving in the right direction in order to get a little bit of rainfall in our uh, parts. Right now we have a mostly cloudy sky out there, and we do have a little bit of rain in the area, but that's not uh, what really is concerning me right now. 76 degrees, current temperature, relative humidity way up there at 85%. There's an easterly wind blowing at 13 miles per hour, and the pressure falling a little bit at 29.90 reading right now. Today's low was 68, got up to 85, so a little bit closer to normal than what we've been seeing uh, over the past several days with above normal readings. And there you see our rainfall total for the year. With no rainfall today, we're running about two inches behind for the year, but I do see some rain chances increasing now over the next couple of days or so. As we look at the uh, high temperatures that were observed around the state of Texas today, you can see uh, not too bad, 87 degree reading down at Galveston Island, the hottest spot in Texas down at Beeville, mercury soared to 96 degrees. Look up there at El uh, Amarillo, only 64 degrees for a high today, not because of a cold front moving through or anything, but mainly because lots of clouds, they've had some rain all day and also some fog kind of socked in, kept temperature down to that 64 degree reading for a high up at Amarillo. Now this is radar, we do have a few showers and thunderstorms around our neck of the woods right now, mainly offshore, but moving ashore 
in a northwesterly fashion at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. We'll see a little bit of that tonight, but the main area of concern is out in the western sections of Texas. Strong showers and thunderstorms continuing to progress in an easterly fashion, and flash flood watches are in effect tonight through tomorrow for much of south central Texas, including the hill country out around San Antonio. You can see, uh, in fact, what well, you just can't see, I guess most of Texas shrouded in cloud cover, but three things that we're looking at. Lots of moisture from the remnant of tropical storm Raquel out in the Pacific currently moving around the Baja area, so all that moisture is being tapped by a large upper level low pressure trough and also a cool front headed this way. So the combination of those features should ensure a fairly decent chance for rain uh, tomorrow through Thursday. Now our forecast map for tomorrow looks like this. There comes that frontal system, but we also have, as I mentioned, lots of moisture streaming up from Raquel in advance of that system and the upper level trough. So as a result, I think the heaviest concentration of thunderstorms and rain will be to our north and to the northeast, but we should still see a fair amount of rain, and we could see some of this rain kind of get heavy at times, so we'll have to kind of keep an eye on this system. It could cause some flooding around town. Now, this is the forecast for tonight. We're calling for a mostly cloudy sky as we look at the beautiful George R. Brown Convention Center. A 30% chance of showers with a low of 71 degrees and a light south wind. For tomorrow, a 60% chance of thunderstorms. I don't know how long it's been since I put those kind of numbers on the scoreboard. A heavy rain possible scenario with a high of 86 degrees. The extended forecast calls for still some lingering rain on Thursday, but clearing out rather nicely on Friday and Saturday. Some much needed rain in our neck of the woods. Take our umbrellas for the MD Anderson Christmas Parade tomorrow. You'll probably need it there. Okay, thanks, Robert. Robert. Still to come, the Cosby Show was in trouble with a group of homeless kids in New York. We'll tell you why after this. The Walsh family just moved from the Midwest to the richest city in America. Everyone here looks like they just stepped out of a music video. I don't even have the right hair. Socially, it's really intense. You make one false move in your history. Now the kids have inherited a wealth of problems. Parents in Beverly Hills let their kids go where they want and do what they want. They're treated like adults. Except they're not. And so have their parents. When's your curfew? Excuse me? Thursday at 8 on Fox 26. I think we're going to need a raise in our allowance. I wonder what he's doing tonight. I know he's drinking. Relax, he's probably just out having a good time. I hope you're right. I'm just so tired of worrying about him. He's a good kid. Don't let it wreck this evening. Teenage alcohol and drug problems won't go away by themselves. When you can't stop on your own, start with Charter Hospital. Sugarland Kingwood. And reruns in our lifetime. The Simpsons are back with dozens of new, never before seen episodes beginning Thursday, October 11th on Fox. Coming up next on City Under Siege, reporter Sherry Martinez will continue her examination of the public nuisance law and see how it's being used to clean up a city housing project. That story and more just moments away on tonight's City Under Siege. And finally tonight, the cause is in some hot water with a group of uh, New York's homeless children. The Cosby Show was going to use the kids' East Harlem mural in the show's opening credits, but what they used was too different for the kids' liking. It included a hypodermic needle when the kids' version was drug-free. Uh, Cosby's people say they will give the kids uh, some credit on the show. And that's all for our news. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Be sure to catch the midday news tomorrow at 12.30. Fran will be back in just a minute with tonight's City Under Siege. a giant truck clearance sale at Worthington Chevrolet. An 86 Isuzu pickup, 69 a month. 83 Chevy Blazer, 79 a month. 87 Suzuki Samurai, 79 a month. 86 Dodge pickup, 89 a month. 87 Ford F-150 pickup, 89 a month. And a jillion van conversions. No down payment financing or special APR. Worthington Chevrolet, come down the Southwest Freeway to Hillcroft. Are these the international He's rules? He's going for a word he knows. He's something. going for a two-syllable word, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Going to be Europe. Um, <laughs> it's a continent. Just right. stick with one-syllable words. He's fine. <laughs> Hold your hand right there. Okay. Mumbly pig. <laughs> Mumbly pig with dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Levi's 100% cotton dockers. If they're not dockers, they're just pants. Uh, you guys have any food? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I think you should go back. Do you to think the office. wave needs words? <laughs> John Wayne is Chisholm, Wednesday at 7 on Fox 26.
City Under Siege. City Under Siege, the first newscast in Texas dedicated to helping our community in the war against drugs. Yeah, the right to remain silent.